Okay, this is 17.2 part 2, and this example is finding a second order derivative, a uh, partial derivative. Remember that when you did second order derivatives just regular, and you would have f double prime, you would just take the derivative of the derivative. Okay, all right, so we're going to find, first of all, we're going to find the derivative, the partial derivatives of this function. And so remember that if it says fx, that means take the derivative of this with respect to x so that y is a constant. So if we're looking up here, we get negative 12x squared. That's how we get that part. And then minus, think of the y cubed as a constant. So it's just going to be there, and it's multiplied with the 3, so minus 3y cubed, but then here's what we've got to do, 2 times that. So minus 6x to the first y cubed. Because the y cubed's a constant, and you've got this x squared term, it's just going to be hanging out with it. And then this is totally a constant, so it goes to 0. Does that make sense? You have to, yeah, well, you're going to have to think about it each time and, and go to each piece. Felicia. Okay. Yeah, I have a question. Uh-huh. Right. Yes. Absolutely. So for this one, I meant to do that in red. Okay. So I'm still meant to do it in red. So we get negative six x. So you know how to do that part. And then you want to think, well, this is just a constant. So it gets multiplied by the number. And so we can't really do anything. We just put it with it. Okay? Is that a little better? So can you put with respect to x in Really foreign. Well, what it's saying is you're taking the derivative of everything that has an x in it. And then y are so it's a constant, so it goes to zero. Everything that has an x in it is what we're deriving, deriving, what we're deriving, <laughs> like we've been doing. And when you take the derivative with respect to y, you're taking the derivative of everything that has a y in it. And if it doesn't have a y in it, it goes to zero. If it's a combination, whatever the x thing is, is part of the constant. Okay? So maybe that'll be better on the next thing. All right, so now we're going to do, let me get rid of that blue stuff up there. Go, go, away, 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 away. I did it in too many pieces. There we go. All right, so now the second part, with respect, respect to y, this doesn't have any y's in it, goes to 0. Right here, we've got negative 3, and we've got a y cubed. So that's going to be negative 9y squared. That's a constant. So negative 9x squared, y squared. The 3 and the negative 3. Right. And then you drop this one down. And then this is a constant, so it hangs out with it. Okay? Plus, and this will be 4y. Are we okay with that? We've slept since Monday, so we have to re. Okay, the Right. Uh-huh. All right, so now we're going to take the second order partial derivative. We're going to do it again, and if you do fxx, that means we're going to this guy that we created right here and take the derivative, again, only looking at the things with x. So this one would be negative 24x minus, if you took just the derivative of 6x, what would you get? 6. So it's negative 6. y cubed is a constant, so it goes with it. John, question? Oh, but if it's if it's with respect to x, you would have you would have 
six. What did you say if you had? You would have 18yx squared. Yeah. Okay. It, it is going to take thinking about each piece as you do it. Y is constant. Yes. It goes everywhere. Yeah. And if it's all by itself, if it's just a y term, it's going to go to zero because a constant, the derivative of a constant is zero. Okay? All right. So that's the fxx. And then we're going to do fyy, which means we're taking the derivative of this one, the first partial derivative, with respect to y again. So in looking here, do you see that the x squared is going to be in your answer? And then we're going to have negative 18y, and you have the x squared. And then plus 4. Okay. We good? Sort of. Now, what if you have to do find x, f, x, y? What you're going to do, do you remember when we did, found the partial derivative fx? We go right back, where were we? Here. That was the partial, the first partial derivative, right? And so now we want to take the derivative of this thing, but with respect to y. That's what the fxy means, okay? So this is what we had. I just wrote it down here again. And we're going to do it with respect to y. And what does that mean? We only look at the things that have y in it as far as actually taking the derivative. This one, what happens here? It goes away. It's a constant. This one, we have negative 18xy squared because we're doing it with respect to y. The x is a constant, so it has to stay with this guy. Negative 6 times 3 is negative 18. Drop it down. So we have negative 18xy squared. In the next section, we have to do this where we take the second order derivative when it's mixed, like this, when it says fxy. I don't think that you hit partial derivatives in the regular calculus sequence till Cal 2, but I could be I could be wrong. I don't think you do it in Cal 1. Yes, ma'am. Uh, so we went back to the partial derivative of x. Mm -hmm. Are we going to go back to the partial of y? We could. I don't I don't think it asked us to do that in Yeah, we did. It's right here. Sorry. Absolutely. So if it says f, y, x, you're going to start with the f, y of x, y. Same idea. Same idea. And so here, if it has an x in it, we're going to count it. And if it has a y, we're not because it's going to go to zero. So in this one, it becomes negative 18x, and then the y squared gets connected. I couldn't remember if I had that one on there or not. Because we're doing it with respect to x, and so when you take the derivative of x squared, what do you get? You would get 2x, but you've got this 9 here, so it becomes 2 times that. There's your negative 18. The x drops down a power. There's your x. This is a constant, so it stays. All right, is that better? Okay. All right, so now I think we're ready for the problems. Were you still writing, Aurelio? Oh, yeah. You got it? Okay. All right. For those of you that don't have them printed... Okay, when you see this little expression up here, it's the same as saying it's the first derivative 
with respect to x. This is the first derivative with respect to y. So they're writing it a little differently. And we're supposed to find those. And then we have to evaluate at these points. So let's do the derivative thing first. If we're doing this guy with respect to x, OK, with respect to x, what's this first term? What will it be? 12x squared. What happens to this term? Goes away, because it's only got y's in it. And this one, what do we have? Minus 7y, because the derivative of 7x is 7, and then the y's a constant, so it hangs on. So that'd be the answer for that first part of the question. All right, now let's do this. Let's do the same thing with respect to y, OK? All right, what happens to the 4x cubed? Gone, Gone. OK? For this term, OK? For this term, minus 7x. All right, so that's what it's going to ask you to do is take the first partial derivative of both of them and just know that that terminology is the same as the fx, OK? All right, now it says find fx of 1, 4. Where are we plugging that in? This one, right. So we're going to have 12 times something squared minus 7 times something, and I'm going to plug in 1 and 4. I think it's that, negative 16, OK? And then we're going to do the same thing plugging in for Fy, except we're going to plug it into this one. Whoops. So we have neg yeah. Now that's one video. OK. And we'll plug in 1 and 4. And um, Yes, and I just wrote it backwards. Thank you. You said that to be nice and say, well, you could mess up, Ms. Barnes, like you just did. OK. All right. So what's our answer going to be, I think? I think that's what you get. And do be careful, because the letters were the same, and I did that typical thing, put it in the wrong order. So be careful. All right. Um, let's do number two. And it's doing the same thing. We're going to find, now they didn't ask for the actual derivative. They just wanted you to evaluate. But you obviously have to find it. So let's find fx. All right, so if we're taking the derivative of this thing right here, can you guys see that, Rhett? Can you see that back there? Um, with respect to x, so the 5 goes away. What does this piece become? Negative 4. Uh, fx, with respect to x. So we're taking the derivative of this thing with respect to x, only looking at the x pieces. So the 4y goes away. And what do we get here? Negative 6xy. OK. And let's go ahead and do the fy. And what do we get? The 5 goes away. 4x goes away. What do we have here? 4 minus Not y, because if you take the derivative of y, you get 1. So it would just be that. All right, so everybody sees where we got those. Now you're just going to plug in to this. So you've got negative, negative 4 minus 6 times x times y. That's 2 and 3. I'll let you get the number. Mm 
-hmm. Okay, and then the second one, um, we just have an x term, so that's 2. Negative 8. Okay. The more you do with these, the easier it'll be. And luckily, there's only three sections on this test. That's, that's it. Okay. All right. Um, oh, that next one's not really nice. Okay. All right. If we're going to take <laughs> the derivative of this guy, with respect to x. I'm going to go down where I have a little bit of room. So let's let's do. Do what? We do have to do a product. Okay, so the original was x cubed e to the what? Okay, so that's our original function. And if we wanted to find fx, that means we're going to do this with respect to x. And we have to recognize that this is what? Okay, this is a product. And remember that's this times the derivative of that plus that times the derivative of that. Okay, it's something we can't lose. All right, so I'm going to write that out as a road map because it might make it a little easier for us. So we've got x cubed times uh, I'll just write ddx so we can remember. e to the 7xy plus the derivative of the first one times e to the 7xy. I don't know if that's going to help us or not, but we'll see. Okay. So we're doing this with respect to x. So on this, we have x cubed times e to the 7x. Yes, because we're with respect to, yeah. Okay, I had to think. Why do we get that? Because it's like a constant. Y is a constant. And the derivative of e to the 6x would be e to the 6x. Okay. Um, oh, it's times, times 7. 7y, which is the constant, isn't it? I think the rule, do you have your rule sheet? Because I'm, I think it's e to the kx, the derivative of that is e to the kx times the derivative of kx. Does anybody have their rule sheet? Or Helio's looking. Over k? That's the
All right. Okay. So it wasn't written like this. It was written e to the u times u prime, which is the derivative of u. So this is kind of the rule. I mean, it's written more in plain English. So if we do that, it's times e to the u, and then we have to multiply it by the derivative of this thing. Well, the derivative of this thing, when we're thinking of respect to x, is what? 7y. So when we, when we get that, we have to also remember that we're taking the derivative of that at the same time with our fx. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so that's that piece. Okay, can I erase the rule? Does anybody? We're just, I'm going to erase that. Just say skip it. <laughs> Creative math. Okay. All right. So now let's do this part. What's the derivative of x cubed with respect to x? 3x squared times e to the 7xy because you don't do anything with that. All right, so is everybody everybody okay with that? If you're not, well, the only thing is we this one ended up getting changed a little bit because we were taking the derivative of that one. But this one, we're not taking the derivative, and that's why I like to write the road map because this told me the only places I'm taking a derivative are here and here. The other part stays, and the with respect to x only comes into play if you're taking the derivative. So this guy just stayed as he was. Okay? All right. So on this one, I don't think there's much we can do to clean up except maybe reorder a little bit. And so 7x cubed y e to the 7xy plus 3x squared e to the 7xy. Now, is there something you could pull out? You could factor that some. You could pull out what is common in both pieces. E to the 7xy and an x squared. But I don't think Math Lab is expecting you to do that. You know, on a test, you could or you couldn't. It wouldn't make an issue. But I think in Math Lab, we're going to leave it like this. That was just the with respect to x. And now I think we have to do it with respect to y. Tony says, yay. All right. So we've got the same road map. So I'm going to write it again. Except this time, when we take the derivative, we're thinking about y. So here we've got x cubed times, and we'll do e to the 7xy times, what's that going to be? 7y. No. But the x cubed is going to be a 0, so why do we even? Oh, I'm so sorry. Thank you. But no, it's not, because you're not taking the derivative of that piece. But on this one, we're taking the derivative oh. with respect to y. 7x? What's the derivative of this? A zero. And the derivative of that, because it's a constant. X cubed is a constant. Is that better, John? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> sort of, sort of. Okay, so that all goes to zero, and we end up with X cubed times that. So 7X to the fourth, E to the 7XY. 
Everybody okay with that? Question? Yeah, yeah, this went to zero. Okay. We had to do all that not for the answer, and maybe that's why it doesn't even, I think, or did it ask? Yeah, it did. So this would one answer, this is one answer, then we have to evaluate a number. So what are we evaluating? Fx of negative 1, 5. So we end up with 7 cubed times 5e to the It's a long evaluation. You ought to practice doing that in your calculator, remembering that this has to all be in a set of parentheses. Um, actually, actually, they I think they want the terms. When they say type an exact answer, that means you're going to have E in the answer, so you're not going to be able to do it all on your calculator. So what are you going to have? Negative 7 times 5E to the what? Negative 35 plus uh, 3 e to the negative 35, right? And so we'll go a little further. This is negative 35 e to the negative 35 plus 3 e to the negative 35 equals what? Yeah. Are we just having fun? No. <laughs> well, <laughs> I have never claimed to be a mathematician. I would claim to be a teacher, so no. Although I do enjoy kind of, you know, I do have some fun. I had fun in, like, on the first time I said, I actually did it. But you actually, this, Haley, it looks ugly, but what is this? This is just algebra actually almost arithmetic, plugging in. You know how to do that. You can do that. All right. What about Fy of 1, negative 4? The Fy was smaller. It was plugging in to this guy. So we have 7 times 1 to the 4th, e to the 7 times 1 times negative 4. one comma negative four. <laughs> I was partially right. Okay, so then we have um, 7e to the negative 28. Okay. And that was number three. And I think there's only four questions on the homework. Big sigh of relief on that. All right. Let's look back at, is everybody okay with that one? As okay as you're going to get. Okay. <laughs> All right. Number four. So on this one, you're not doing any evaluating, but you are finding four things. You are finding the second order. So that's you find the derivative with respect to x, and then you find it again. And then you find fyy. Fxy and Fyx. And this is something that would be really good for you to try to do right now. And if you have my work printed, 
maybe turn it over so that you could try it, okay? There's no risk there. If you don't get it right, no one's going to, you know, come get you. So try it. And I would do it, I would first find fx, and then I would find fy, and that'll be your two things to start with. All right, so here's, here's the work for that, and you had to start out and find uh, the first partial derivative with respect to x and then y. And you're going to use these in all of these down here. And so I've written out f double x means use f of x, not f of x, fx with respect to x. This one, fyy, use fy, do it with respect to y fxy, you're going to use fx, but do it with respect to y, and the same thing down here. So the directions are over here, the answers are here. So I think you should be able to see that one.